In the previous comment module on datums, we talked about what datums are, why they are important, and how there are many different datums available for you to use. Ultimately, these different references exist for specific reasons. There's not one right datum for all applications. But what happens when data was collected in one datum and needs to be shifted to another to suit our needs? This is where methods for moving data from one reference to another, like vDatum, come in handy. However, before we jump into vDatum, we should talk a bit more about the three different types of datums we use for NOAA hydrography. Geometric, orthometric, and tidal datums. To keep things just a bit simpler, let's stick to just the vertical datums for this talk. NAT83 is a geometric datum, or a datum that is based on a reference ellipsoid, the GRS80 ellipsoid in this case. This ellipsoid is a squashed sphere that approximates the shape of the Earth. Heights in NAT83 are measured above or below this ellipsoid, which is a bit more convenient than measuring from the center of the Earth. It's a nice simple model though, and we can define an ellipsoid with just a few parameters. The GPS satellites are positioned using a similar, although slightly different reference ellipsoid known as WGS84. But because both NAT83 and WGS84 ellipsoids are simple mathematical models, we can pretty easily transform measurements between the two. NAVD88 is an orthometric datum, or a datum based on gravity. If the Earth were a smooth ball of uniform material, there would not be any difference between orthometric and geometric datums. Unfortunately for us, there are mountains and oceans and giant pots of gold buried underground, and all of these have gravitational effects. The zero elevation for NAVD88 was set as the mean sea level at a tide station in Father Point in Quebec, Canada, and heights were transferred from this point to the rest of the U.S. by differential leveling. In this sense, NAVD88 is flat with respect to gravity. If two points have the same NAVD88 height, a ball would not roll between them. Another way to put this is to say that NAVD88 is a geoid, or a level equipotential surface. Our chart datums are typically tidal datums. Mean sea level, mean lower low water, and mean high water are all local water level datums based on long-term observations of the water level at a particular point. To get these datums right, we need to observe the water levels through all the astronomical cycles that drive them. The moon has a big impact on tides, so by observing water levels through a full lunar cycle of 30 days, we can get pretty close. But to fully capture all the variations of the sun and the moon, we need to observe the water levels for 19 years. Now, you might be thinking, Wait, mean sea level and NAVD88 kind of sound like the same thing. I mean, shouldn't the sea be on average flat with respect to gravity? Well, it turns out to be pretty close, but persistent currents and atmospheric effects can hold up some of those piles of water, so mean sea level isn't really flat with respect to gravity. This difference is called the topography of the sea surface. Mean low low water isn't really flat with respect to gravity either, in fact, in some places, like the Bay of Fundy, the tidal range is so huge that mean low low water is far below mean sea level. In other areas, there's not much tidal variation at all, so mean low low water is pretty close to mean sea level. So how do these datums all work together in a typical NOAA hydro scenario? Well, let's take a tide gauge installation as an example. When you install tide stations and level in a staff, you are tying the instrument measurements to the local water level. If we leave the station in place for a while, we can calculate the tidal datums at that point, typically using nearby stations with full 19-year histories to help estimate the datums at our gauge. We typically install permanent benchmarks to reference and hold those datum relationships after we remove the gauge. To tie these local water level datums into either NAD83 or NAVD88, you'll need to make a GPS measurement at one of the benchmarks to tie the station datum into NAD83, or run a level run all the way to a network that is tied in all the way back to Father Point up in Quebec. Luckily for us, we now have geoid models that we can use to calculate the NAVD88 height from the NAD83 GPS height. Okay, so now that we have a rough understanding of these datums, we can talk about vDatum and ERZT. Let's talk vDatum first. 
VDatum is a NOAA design tool that lets you take in data in one reference frame and output it in another, using existing models and data to convert between the two. VDatum is available all over the continental US and can convert a single point or a file which we use to generate a VDatum surface for application in Keras. As an example, let's look at going from NAVD88 to some common reference systems. You can see that if I output the difference between NAVD88 and mean lower low water, mean lower low water is lower than NAVD88, which is what you'd expect. Local mean sea level is also very close to NAVD88. If I continue and generate the rest of the common tidal datums, you see they line up predictably. I can also include NAD83 and see the difference between tidal and ellipsoid datums. But how does VDatum know these differences? To transform from NAD83 to mean lower low water using VDatum as we do with ellipsoidally referenced surveys, we need to take three things into account. One, the distance from the ellipsoid to the geoid. Two, the distance from the geoid to mean sea level, or TSS. And three, the difference between mean sea level and mean lower low water at each point. There's a great deal of thinking that has gone into each one of these things, and I don't claim to understand at all. But if I was to try and provide a brief summary, it would look something like this. The geoid is modeled from gravity data and tied into the benchmark network. The sea surface topography is modeled from global altimetry data and the mean sea level datums at all the tide gauges. Finally, the difference between mean sea level and mean lower low water is calculated using hydrodynamic models that account for the effect of the shoreline and bathymetry on tides. These three models are used by VDatum to make the transformation from NAD83 to mean lower low water possible. But what about when we work in Alaska or other areas where VDatum doesn't exist yet? Well, there's another technique called ERZT, or ellipsoidally referenced zone tides, that can help here. See, what we lack in places like Alaska is the network of established measured tidal values, geodetic measurements, and tide model predictions that are a prerequisite to the availability of VDatum. ERZT, however, relies on the vessel's GPS height, heave, and dynamic draft, as well as the zone tides you are most likely already using on project. So let's wrap this up by looking at a question that I see asked a lot. What's the difference between ERZT and VDatum? Well, VDatum is a tool for transforming between datums where we already have well-established relationships. It relies on historical data and geoid models to produce an accurate transformation for your area. ERZT uses your GPS height and water level models like zone tides to transform between ellipsoid and your water levels. Well, I know we went through a lot of terminology here, but I hope you got an idea of the basic concepts. I believe having a familiarity with these concepts will help you out a great deal in the long run. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.